Hello there. This video is about the equations of motion. We're going to look at the topic of the equations of motion by first defining some of the quantities that we need and then we're going to derive from your earlier work at GCSE, we're going to derive two of the equations of motion and then we're going to look at all of them together and see how they form a set and some of the positions or some of the places where they can be used. Okay, so let's make a start. Alright, so we're going to look at these five quantities and we're going to start by defining them. The first one is displacement. Now displacement is the vector quantity that's related to distance um, and it's usually given the symbol S. Sometimes it's given X but we're going to use S for our purposes. Now displacement is defined as the distance traveled by an object in a given direction or in a straight line from the starting point. So obviously that gives it, gives it its vector nature. So that's fairly straightforward. We know about that one. We've got two velocities here. We've got the initial velocity and we've got the final velocity. The initial velocity is given the symbol u and the final velocity is given the symbol v. So u is the velocity at the start of the motion that we're analyzing and v is the velocity at the end of the motion that we're analyzing, i.e. the final velocity. Both obviously measured in meters per second and both have the same definition. So velocity is defined as the rate of change of displacement, i.e. how quickly displacement is changing, how quickly the object is effectively moving away from its starting point. Um, and that gives us our definition of velocity, okay, the rate of change of displacement. You can use um, the change of displacement per unit time if you want for the definition, but I think rate of change of displacement is neater. And obviously for the final velocity, it's still a velocity, so it's still the same definition, rate of change of displacement. Okay, then we've got acceleration. Acceleration is given the symbol A as usual, and it's measured in meters per second squared, and acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So you can see how these three um, quantities fit together. You start off with displacement in meters and effectively what you're doing when you're taking a rate is you're dividing by time, it's per unit time, which is why velocity is meters per second like that because you've got one divided by time so there's a seconds minus one and here when you take the rate of change of velocity what you're effectively doing is you're dividing by time again so you've got dividing by time twice and therefore you get meters per second squared and that's how the units fit together and that's sort of the hierarchy of these three variables displacement in meters initial velocity in meters per second because it's the rate of change of displacement and acceleration in meters per second squared because it's the rate of change of velocity and the fifth one is dead easy it's just the time so time is measured in seconds and it's effectively how long the motion that you're analyzing has taken <clears throat> okay so those are the five variables that we're going to use and those are the definitions for them they're very important definitions that you need to learn okay so we have here um, an s a u a v an a and a t so sometimes this topic is called SUVAT and that's how we'll refer to it on a day-to-day -day basis SUVAT is the same thing as the the topic of the equations of motion okay so let's see how all this works all right now one thing that's very important to stress right from the beginning is that the equations of motion only work if the acceleration is constant or uniform all right so where there's uniform acceleration these equations of motion can be used to analyze any situation where objects are moving uh, in straight line or at least under accelerated motion and what we're going to do is we're going to start with these two basic concepts that you've seen before okay we're going to start with the equation for average velocity which is displacement over time and we're going to start with this velocity time graph which has a sloping constant uh, gradient line on it and what we're going to do is we're going to use these two for um, to, to generate, if you like, a couple of the equations of motion. All right, so we've got this line here, all right, which is um, a line on a velocity time graph. And because the gradient is constant on a velocity time graph, we can say that because the gradient represents the acceleration, we know that the acceleration is constant. And we can also say that the acceleration is the gradient of this line and therefore if we call this this value here v because it's the final velocity and this value here u because it's the initial velocity this is time zero 
and down here we've got time t. Now we can see that the gradient in this line is the change in the y variable, okay, which is that distance there, which is v minus u. All right, that's the distance of this axis here, and the change in the x variable um, is just t. This is effectively t minus zero. So the acceleration, which is the gradient of the line, is equal to the change in the y v minus u over the change in the x, which is t. Now, if you rearrange that, we will end up with v minus u equals a t. Okay. So that's almost at our first equation of motion. All right. We're going to leave that there. We'll come back to that one in a minute, and then we're just going to tidy it up at the end. The second thing we can measure about this graph, I'm going to do this in green, is the area. So the area is effectively this area here. Sorry about the scruffiness. In fact, I might use straight lines. Yeah. And what we can do is we can split this area up into two separate areas, which we can then add together again at the end. So we've got effectively a right angle triangle in here and a rectangle in here. And these are the two areas that add to get the total area under the under the line. Don't forget, you have to go all the way down to the the origin. So exam questions can try and catch you out by putting a non-zero value uh, hitting the x-axis. So you have to make sure that you add on the extra bit underneath. But here we don't have to do that because it all goes all the way down to the origin. So what we're going to do is look at the two areas. <clears throat> now the area under a velocity time graph, if you remember from GCSE, is equal to the displacement. All right. Now the displacement or distance travel, um, we're giving the symbol s. Okay. So this area here, which represents a certain distance travelled, is going to be the base times the height times a half for this particular right angle triangle, half base times height. Okay. Now, the, now let's put that in. I'm going to put it in a different order because it suits my purposes. Okay. So it's half. It's the half. Um, the height. Is this one, which is v minus u times the base, which is t. Okay, so the area of that ring, rec, that triangle there is a half times the base times the height, which is half times v minus u times t. The area in here, which represents and the other bit of the distance travel, the other dis displacement, is going because it's a rectangle, is just going to be the base times the height because it's a rectangle. So the base is t, the height is u, so what we end up with is ut. Okay, now we're going to call this s1 and we're going to call this s2 just because um, it differentiates them. The total displacement for the whole motion is going to be the sum of those because it's just those two shapes added together. So we've got s1 plus s2. Now if we look at how that works, um, I'm going to write this down here now. So the total displacement S is equal to, I'm just going to change the order of these because again it will suit my purposes towards the end. It's going to be UT plus the other one, whoops, I'm sorry this is the, the graphics tablet being silly again. Um, UT plus your half. Now we've got V minus u times t. Okay. But this is a bit messy, so we want to try and tidy it up. <clears throat> but we can use the other one to tidy it up, because up here we have a v minus u. Right? And down here we also have a v minus u. This v minus u is equal to a t, because it's the same motion. We can replace this v minus u, we can substitute with this a t, which becomes s equals u t plus a half a t that's that a t and then you've got another t here so it becomes a t squared okay so we've got s equals u t plus a half times a times t squared and that all comes from looking at the area underneath this line here representing the distance travelled by whatever object it is that's that's undergoing this acceleration okay now that is one of the equations of motion Right, so that we are now at an end point of our of our algebra of our derivations, and that is one of the equations of motion. This one up here, I said I was going to come back to at the end because 
Um, effectively, what we want to do is just rearrange this slightly. We we'll take the u over to the other side to leave v on its own. So when we do that, we end up with v equals u plus a t. Okay, and that's another one of the equations of motion. All right. So these two at the bottom here, one has followed this derivation in green in the area, and one has followed this derivation in red, which effectively has come straight down here. That's from the gradient of this line. Okay. Uh, and actually, if we if we look up here, um, we can see all the quantities involved. Okay. Those two you need to be able to derive in the exam. Okay. They can ask you explicit questions about deriving those two from that graph. But there are more. And if you take these two and you substitute them one into the other in various ways, you can arrive at different endpoints, different equations of motion. When you do that, you end up with these. Um, and this is the complete set of those equations. Right, I'm just going to make these a little bit smaller so I can get everything on the same page. <coughs> All right. Okay, so this is the set. So we have um, our initial one that we did first, which is here s equals ut plus half at squared, and the one that we did second, which is here. The others, which as I say, can be derived in very similar ways, just substituting one into the other, are um, s equals a half v plus u times t. That actually comes from the equation that we had on the previous page. That actually comes from that one. The average velocity equals displacement over time turns into this top one over here. s equals a half times v plus u times t. We also have s equals vt minus a half at squared, very similar to that. So by substituting one of these others into that one, we get that one. And the fifth one is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Okay. Uh, and as I say, they're all combinations of each other, rearranged and simplified. Okay. Now, the reason these form a complete set is as follows. There are five variables, as we looked at. There's s, there's u, there's v, there's a and there's t. Each of these equations has four variables in. This has s, v, u, and t in it, and therefore it has no a. This has v, u, a, and t in it, and has no s. So we've had no a in the first one, no s in the second one. This has s equals u, t, plus a, t squared, so s, u, t, and a. So no v in that one. This one is s, v, t, and a, so no u in that one. And this one is v, u, a, and s. So no t in that one. So all these equations have a different one of the five variables missing. <coughs> Which means if you know any three variables, let's say you know v, u, and t, you can use this equation to find s. Um, and you can use uh, this equation to find um, a. All right, so as long as you know three variables, you can find the other two using the equations of motion. Right? And they're a very powerful set of equations. And just to restress, they only apply under conditions of constant acceleration, that acceleration is unchanging. So this value here has a constant value in all the equations. If it didn't, you wouldn't be able to use these at all. They wouldn't apply. And next time, we're going to have a look at how we can use those to produce predictions and analysis of various types of motion.